All right, ladies and gentlemen. Are we have any gentlemen in the room? Is this our video person? <laughs> all right, we're going to go ahead and get started. It is 3.15, and I know we all, um, I know we have a three and a half to four hour drive ahead of us after this. So um, we're just going to, I just want to start um, by saying thank you um, for staying around for our presentation. Um, and thank you to Eastern, which I'm a graduate of, um, and the board for having us um, be your keynote speakers today. Um, I am Christina Erickson. I am the um, sort of leader of our department. And um, the main, and we're just going to start by introducing ourselves. Um, and so the main courses that I teach are in the design area. Um, I teach all of the clothing and construction um, classes as well as fashion merchandising and design. Um, but I also teach in the foods program when need be. I also teach in child development when need be. So I'm kind of the jack of all trades. Um, but primarily I teach in the design area. Um, I'm Michelle Backus, and I teach child development, intro to food, sometimes the second level food prep, and then I also teach interior design, and next semester I'll be teaching consumer ed. So again, just around the board, keeps me busy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Kayla Normanczyk, I was at Seams and now I'm at Niles West, but I've taught culinary and consumer and clothing and pretty much everything. <laughs> I'm Sarah Lorm, and I'm mostly the foods and nutrition courses at Stevenson, and also I teach a course And one of our team members um, was not able to make it here with us today, Sue Taylor. Um, she is the director of our Little Patriots preschool program that we have. We have a full day preschool program. The kids are there from seven until six. Um, we also have a kindergarten enrichment program from the area um, half day kindergarten programs. The children are bused to Stevenson um, for a like two to three hour um, kindergarten kind of afternoon session. Um, so she's a director of that, and that's called, uh, the class that uh, corresponds with that is called Teaching Young Children. So when we talk about that um, throughout the course of our presentation, you'll kind of know what we're talking about. Um, so we're here to talk about what's happening in FCS. Um, technology is changing so quickly. When we first did this presentation about a year and a half ago, um, very few people or schools really had iPads in their, in their schools, and schools are adopting this very quickly. Um, the students are adopting this very quickly, and as we all know, teachers have to stay on top of what this, the students are doing. As you we were driving down here, I was thinking back um, to my days at Eastern, and you know, they didn't really do a lot with the internet really yet. Email was still a black screen with green letters going across it. And it's, it's come so far so fast, um, and I don't think when most of us were in school um, to, to become a teacher, um, we had any idea that there would be such a thing as an iPad. So a lot of us were not taught in school how to teach using these. And so we just hope to help you guys be able to do that. Um, we found this really cool little clip. see there are a lot of options out there there's so many apps that are being created more and more every single day and how do we know which ones are good how do we know which ones are going to be useful in our classrooms um, and so we're going to go through some of the apps that we use in our classes we're going to have some time at the end of the session to hear from you guys because I think one great thing about coming to these types of conferences is being able to connect with other FCS professionals and learn from each other um, because you know we sometimes can be our our own best assets. So um, you do have iPads with some supplies out on the table. Um, during this session, we are going to be demonstrating some of the common classroom management techniques that we use with our students, um, because the students can get very distracted by the technology, whether it's Candy Crush, or it's Facebook, or it's iMessaging, whether it's Snapchatting, whatever they're doing. Um, it can be very distracting um, to have the technology in front of them. Um, for today, we have three main lesson targets. The first, uh, we're going to describe education apps and lesson ideas for using them within, a family, within family consumer sciences. We're going to collaborate with FCS professionals in a professional learning community and explore how integrative technology can make teaching more resourceful and appealing to students. Um, the school that we teach at 
It's called Stevenson High School. It is in Lincolnshire, which is a northwest suburb of Chicago. Um, we have approximately 4,000 students and is consistently ranked within the top 200 high schools by Newsweek magazine. We started a program called Eye to Eye um, three years ago, and they started by giving a handful of teachers the iPads, and we went through some training to how to use them in our classrooms. And they, the school purchased um, iPad carts. So they had carts with 30 iPads on them that we could sign out or you know, reserve through the lab that we could use in our classes. <coughs> Since then, um, this last year, all of our freshmen got, all of our incoming freshmen got iPads. And then this past year, all of our freshmen and sophomores, and then a lot of juniors got them. So, um, but of course, teaching in an elective area, we have students in the same classroom that are all multi-levels. I have some that are all freshmen. I have some that are sophomores through seniors. So if I have a handful of my seniors in my class, it is really hard sometimes to implement because they don't all have an iPad from the school to use. Um, so we are sometimes phasing these projects and activities in slowly. Um, sometimes we do have to reserve the iPad carts for our entire class to be able to have them. And it is really annoying when it's just two or three kids that don't have the technology. Um, but that is something that we're hoping by next year all of our students will have them and we'll be able to implement this. Um, we also want to make sure to recognize that the iPads need to be a tool for learning. Um, the iPads cannot, you know, they should not be used to take the place of actual doing. You cannot do the same things on an iPad that you can do in person. You cannot do the same things on the iPad that you can do in a foods lab. They can be a tool and they can be a resource, but it is very important to remember that these things, that iPads or any kind of technology, whether it's a Chromebook or a laptop, whatever it is, cannot replace the actual art and skill of doing something with your hands or actually experiencing that situation. Um, and that's something that, um, we really have looked for in, our, in the activities that we do. We, we make sure that what the technology that we're using is really fitting into our curriculum and is enhancing what we're doing, not um, taking away from. Uh, one of the first things that we um, do with the students is we usually will either distribute the iPads or have them take out their iPads after we have gone through the activity and after we have gone through the instructions of what they're going to be doing. Just like with a lot of us, you know, if our phone is out, it is way too tempting to just hop on Facebook and see if anybody's liked my picture. You know, who is Snapchatting me? Who, do you guys know what Snapchat is? They take pictures of themselves and then send it to their friends. You know, it's so stupid. I don't know why they do it, but they do. You know, and they're doing it in school. And they shouldn't be. Um, but again, it's really becoming harder and harder to really maintain and control those situations. Um, so we do typically uh, give them the iPads or have them take out their iPads. We also will have them keep the iPads face down on the tables in front of them um, in order to kind of, again, make sure their attention is on us. Um, sometimes, you know, when we first started doing this and we had the carts, we would actually have them check out the iPads with the school ID. Um, there, the couple downsides of the iPad security settings are really minimal on a computer you know I the school you know obviously the school still blocks certain websites and things like that but it was easier sometimes to monitor what the kids were going to with the iPads um, teacher circulation is imperative we can't just throw the iPad in their hands and be like here go this is what you're doing we can't do that we have to pay attention to what they're doing um, in our school, like I said, we do not, not all of our students have iPads yet. So a lot of the apps that we're going to show you guys are the free or the light versions of the apps. And the downside, if your students all don't have their own iPad yet from the school, is that they can't often, they can't save to the, to the iPad because that iPad is not theirs. So there's a lot of things that they, they can't, they, we, to use the light versions of some of these apps, they're free, which is great, but they can't always, they can't save their project to the app and come back to it later because that app is located on that iPad. And yes, you can email it to yourself, but it's emailing you the image. It's emailing you the screenshot. It's, you can't manipulate it after you email it to yourself. So the, again, it's easier if all the students have their own, but also we recognize that we know that not all students do yet. So we're going to kind of show some different variations and things you can do. Um, one of the things that we do use, the first app we're going to talk about is called Timer Plus. It's a timer app. Um, so you could 
um, it's always good to let them know how much time they have. So to use that to display for them um, what um, the time they have. You say you have five minutes, display that. Um, you can, for your iPads, um, get um, a cord that you can connect your iPad to your screen. So I could plug this dongle into here and plug this into my iPad and it could project to the screen. Um, so that is one thing that if you wanted to do that, you could display that. So I don't know if these come with iPads. I don't, I've never, no. Okay, so you can buy them separately. Um, and there are some ways now too, there are some apps that you can um, display your, um, your app through a Wi-Fi onto the screen. So there are some, they're coming out with new things. We gave you the list of all the apps and how much they are, if they were free or not, and then also descriptions, so if you want to take notes on here, and you can see how we use them in our classroom. You can use this, this is your resource to take with you. And then the little scan on the front will take you to our uh, Stevenson Family Consumer Science webpage. Um, which I will, after today, maybe tomorrow, <laughs> I will put up there a digital copy of the handout as well as a digital copy of the PowerPoint. So you can reference that if need be. <clears throat> All right, the first app we're going to talk about is called Shoe Designer. Um, and I use this in my fashion merchandising and design class. My students for their final exam create a fashion line. And um, as a part of their line, they have to create several accessories to go with that line. So one of the accessories that they have is a shoe they have to design. Um, so they have to design the shoe to make it inc incorporated into their line. Um, this app includes different insteps, heel heights, toes, colors, accent pieces you can add to them. Um, and then when you're done with them, you can email them. And you can also share them on Facebook and Twitter. You know, we're going to kind of talk about that a little bit. Using Facebook and Twitter to promote your classes you know, these kids are addicted to, to the social media. I mean, we are too to some extent. Um, so using things like this, my students were tweeting their shoe designs out to their friends. Look what I made in class today. I mean, the best promotion for your program is a good word of mouth. Um, so having those kids send that to their friends, post it to their to the Facebook, you know, whatever they're going to do with it. I'll, I've had kids do other products when they, like, they'll Snapchat a picture of it to their friends. You know, so using that social media to get the word out in, into your school or even your community to what you're doing is a really, a really great idea. So this is going to be an interactive app. So if you open up the blue iPads that are on your table, does everybody have their own? Okay. Um, the app images are in the upper left-hand corner. We only put, we put out four on each table. So there's a couple more floating around now. And if you can, if you, if you don't have one for yourself, just work with a friend. Um, one thing we have found is we don't really need to teach kids how to use apps very often. They figure it out. Okay, so open up the Shoe Designer app and then just take a couple minutes and um, create a shoe. I'm not gonna give you any other directions really. We have a shoe fashion show when we're done. Yeah, this app is not one of the free apps. There is no light version, um, but it, it's four ninety nine for each. And they a lot of times schools or schools can get like a discount when they buy twenty of them or thirty of them, however many you would need.
Two more minutes. I actually give my students a whole class period to play with this app, so. It's like it's so cold. So cold. Okay, finish up your shoe design. And I'm going to ask that you close out of the app and place the iPad face down in front of you. <laughs> so with this app, there are additional backgrounds and accent pieces you can buy to enhance what's already there. Um, I have not splurged on that yet. I feel that that $5 gets me what I need for the purpose of my students. Sometimes I even have students who don't color it in. They'll just do this maybe shoe, but they just leave it all white. And then they'll print it out, and then they'll add color on their own. Um, so I give, if they wanted to print, because there's no colors or fabrics that are printed. Um, so I do allow them to do that as well. Or they can design it from scratch, but they usually don't want to design it from scratch. Um, the next app is called Adobe Ideas, um, and this is an app that is kind of um, used, you could use this in a lot, a lot, a lot of different ways in our, uh, in our programs. Um, I use it, um, I have had some students, like I said, in my fashion merchandising class, they create a fashion line. Um, so I did have a student last semester, she actually used her Chromebook, um, but she used an app and she did all of her sketches um, using her tablet, which I thought was really cool, so I tried it. This was my attempt. Um, it, it, it's not as easy with your finger. You have to use, um, I found it much easier to use um, a stylus with it. They actually do now also have a stylus that looks like a pen, like a tip of a pen or tip of a pencil, which you can also use to get a much more natural feel to drawing. Um, my own personal philosophy, however, is that students need to learn how to do this with colored pencils and pencils first. They can't just, again, it's, it's where it all starts. And so, um, yeah, it's cool. They see it on Project Runway that they could do it all on an iPad or a tablet, but they're going to be able to manipulate those colors better if they're learning how to do it um, with a colored pencil or a marker or whatever their choice is. Um, so they, they've done that. They create an ad as well for their store. Um, but what you would do in Adobe Ideas to get my croaky body, um, is I actually took a screenshot of one offline, brought it up in Adobe Ideas and sketched over it. So they don't have to create the croquis template by themselves using the you know, nine head figure. They can import one using just the, the web as well. Um, and then they, right, they take a screenshot of it from online and then bring it up into the, into the app. Um, in foods, they use this and they do an advertisement um, you can use it to, you know, do a fruit or a vegetable. You can do this for any sort of an ad, any place they want to be creative to be able to, to kind of draw and write. You can bring in images of all, all kinds of things from the web. Um, I've also used this to create a pattern. Um, so they create a pattern associated with their fashion line. And they use the iPad to do that as well. Um, so there's lots of possibilities um, with this app. Are you, are you assessing as you go mm -hmm. or is this all mm -hmm. part of um, this, well, that particular use of it, um, they are doing, like the ad is we talk about, you know, the four P's of marketing. And so we talk about promotion. So they turn this in and it's evaluated. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they turn it in hard copy? Yeah. So they email it to me. Oh, they email it mm -hmm. to me. Okay. Mm -hmm. the, another downside with the iPads is you can't print from them. Right. You know, so they, uh, sometimes they don't have to print it out. Sometimes I'll just keep it digital, like the shoes. I grade from my computer screen, but I, what I do is I print them out and put them in a display case because kids oh. think it's cool yeah. and so that can show off their work. Um, but yeah, I could possibly just grade it from the, from the screen. Or they can email it to themselves and print it off. Yeah. I see. 
That's what I have been having to do a lot. So if they were to do the sketching of the white shoe, uh -huh. they can email themselves and print it from oh. their computer. Um, there are a ton of um, apps that are related to blogs that are online. So, but it's kind of nice because it kind of contains everything in one. Um, one that I actually really like, and she's actually a former student of mine that I'm just so unbelievably proud of. Um, hers, it's called College Fashionista. Some of you may have heard about it. They do have writers here at Eastern. Um, she started this blog highlighting the fashion of college students. And there's this famous quote by Coco Chanel that I love that fashion, you know, it, it's in the street. It's what we live. It's what's happening every single second of the day. That's where fashion starts, not by what's necessarily on the runway. So I, I, I use these blogs to, um, to kind of highlight that to my students. Um, because typically when you're younger, you take more fashion risks than you do when you're older. And so that's where fashion starts with young people. Um, and so um, she started this um, from her like dorm room in Indiana where she went to school. And um, now she lives in New York and collaborates with the most amazing people and has the most amazing experiences. She just did a whole online chat with Kenneth Cole. Um, she works with Vogue all the time, Teen Vogue. It's just amazing. So I'm super proud of her. So I'm kind of plugging her a little bit. Um, but it's a great, it's actually a really great tool, a really great website. Um, so, but looking at that street style help, so I use this actually to help students predict, predict the trends for the future. So they look at what they're wearing, what the, these high, college students are wearing. Again, students take more risks in college because at high school level, the people are usually a little bit more um, conformist. Um, so looking at what people are wearing in college and then uh, what, what might be coming down the pipeline for them soon. Um, I actually have a, I have a club that does a fashion magazine. So we put out a fashion magazine twice a year. And one of the things that we do as a part of the magazine is called Style in the Halls. So it's kind of the same concept. The students take pictures of what their friends are wearing in the halls and it ends up in the magazine to kind of see what people are wearing. Um, you know the problem with that is printing pictures or just cut off their head. Oh no, we print their pictures. Um, it is for school. We do not put it online. She actually approached me about doing a high school fashionista. And her lawyers actually told her that it would be really hard to do for that exact reason. You don't have their parental permission, they're not 18, to put them online, but this is a school publication. It would be like putting it in the newspaper or putting it in the yearbook. We don't distribute it really out. I mean, I have kids that are in college that email me and say, Ms. Erickson, can you send me one? I send it to them in the mail. But their pictures are not on Facebook. They're not, so it's just submitted without, within the school. Um, the kids really like it. It's been a great, huh? And the do not photo list. Yeah, and we do have, the school does have a do not photo list. The, there are a number of students who don't, whose parents have not provided permission for their photos to be used. So those students we can't publish, but usually the people that are in it are the friends of the kids that are in the magazine. Um, so that's something that, so we, we do a version of that. So she did want to do a, a high school fashionista, but her lawyers said that it would be too difficult to keep track of the consent forms, which makes sense to me. What is your friend's name? Her name is Amy Levin. Levin. Yes, L-E-V-I-N-E. -E. Mm -hmm. um, you can find her through the College Fashionista. She's on Pinterest. She's on Twitter. She's a, she has some really cool talks, too, that she's done that she's put on YouTube that I've used in class. Um, I've, I've had her come speak to my students before. Um, but it's really a really cool idea, and it's just really neat that she started. And she's young. She's like 20 probably t under 25 and she just she's this really cool idea she had and she went with it um also a lot of the fashion lines have uh, apps so the one um that i use i use valentino um i use chanel there's a list of you know gucci vera wang donica i mean they all they're all out there um you they have their current fashion shows they so they actually have the runway show which is cool um they also have individual looks from each show um, and so you can zoom in and kind of see a little bit closer detail of them. Um, so it's just really cool for the students to be able to see the similarities, the differences between the different designers, looking at who their target markets might be, that whole business side of the fashion industry. So there's a lot of um, apps out there. You know, I, I let the students bring them to me too. Even a lot of stores have apps now. So I like the designers better personally, um, but there's a lot of options out there as far as, and again, this is all available online too. So, you know, if you have just a computer, you know, the different blogs and things like that, there's tons of stuff out there that you can use from online. But if you have the tablet, 
it's an easy way for them, the students to be able to reference it quickly in class. Um, and then another one that we've started using is Polyvore. Um, this is a free app. It is also a website. Um, I started using, I had a student show this to me a couple years ago. Um, and you could use this. Um, you, it divides looks into categories. And I, we actually just discovered they have interior design items as well, which we didn't even know as, as we were exploring the app a little bit more. Um, so you could give them a color, which is what Michelle did for her interior design class. She gave them a color and they designed a room around a particular color. You could give them an element or principle of design. You could give them a customer. Say, okay, here's your customer. This is what they want to spend, because on Polyvore it gives you the prices as well. This is your customer. This is what they want to spend. Go be a stylist. Mm -hmm. Dress your customer. And then, you know, you could have them put, and then they would take a screenshot of it. Again, yeah, they can right. also post it to Facebook. They can post it to Twitter, again, using the social media sites. Um, a lot of times on Pinterest, if any of you guys do Pinterest, when they put the outfits together on Pinterest, they're usually using Polyvore yeah. to do it. All right, you ready? Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm going to talk about a few things related to interior design. Um, House is a big app that we like to look at and reference in class for inspiration. Um, it's something that my students, I just, none of them had heard of it this semester. So it was exciting for me as the educator to show them this website. I find myself using it a lot just for my personal inspirations. Um, we all like to dream, you know. <laughs> so we, they love it. I find they, they use it whenever I assign them a new um, assessment or activity. They're always looking and referring to back to that website. They can put it all into one spot and save their ideas. And it's kind of like a virtual design book. So if you've never ever checked it out, I recommend it. It's, it's, it's pretty awesome. Um, it's a, consider the Wikipedia of interior and exterior design. Um, Pinterest, um, m many of us have, may have heard of this before. You may have your own account. Um, three years back, right when it started, I had an account and had heard about it from another friend. And none of my students had ever heard of it before. So what I did was I had my interior design students open an account, and it was before you had to be on the waiting list and all of that. And they had a Pinterest board for interior design so they could like pin things in the same spot. Um, they also are able to follow me and see, like, refer back to some of the things that I talk about in class. And I use it not just in interior design. I started with that because I found it to be the most useful in that course. But I have recipes we reference in foods classes. We have in t um, child development and teaching young children. There's a ton of lesson and ideas in children's nutrition that they can refer to. And it's a nice um, way for us as educators, too, to follow other Pinterest users. There's a um, FCS Pinterest that we follow as well so to get ideas that we can relate and modify for our use in, in the classroom and I use it um, in my clothing construction classes I have a DIY board that a lot of my students follow or I'll have I have like sewing tutorials um, I also I, there's a visual merchandising board that I have that my students follow I have a fashion history board I have an element and principles of design board um, so I mean, obviously, if they're following my personal boards, I'm always careful about what I pin. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's no inappropriate recipes for things on there. Um, but, you know, again, like Michelle said, there's a ton, a ton of different things out there now as more and more people are coming into Pinterest. It's kind of interesting. Pinterest is one of the social medias that actually didn't start with young people. Pinterest started with, like, the 35-year-old moms. <laughs> um, and that's where it started to get popular with. So it's kind of funny that it's kind of worked backwards. All right, mood board. So in interior design, I was talking about brainstorming and researching and planning, getting our ideas down on paper. We start with a 3D mood board where we make it in our sketchbooks, and that's nice because you can feel the textures and see the wallpaper and um, kind of feel, use our senses a little bit more. But I do show them the mood board um, app to show them the differences. Because of the technology and the increase in um, all of these apps utilized in the force, in interior designers, I've met, I have friends that are in this field. They use these because it's at the touch of their hands. When they meet with clients, they can take notes and add, um, add a lot of ideas. So I do show them. It's um, one problem with this is the light version, so you can't like up, to, you know, bring in a room. But there is furniture. You can take screenshots and make kind of a, like a collage. So I do like to do that to show them the differences between like a 3D versus an app. Um, we compare and contrast those. Um, they again can share it via Facebook or Twitter, which I have found they have done before, which is nice for us um, in the program. And then they will email it to myself or email it to themselves so they can print it up to include on their design boards. Okay, so you use the word light. Lights, yes. Like a light version. Light that version. means they're free. So like apps are they're smart. You know, they bring up a version that's free. And then if 
to have more of the features, you need to pay 99 cents, 1.99, 4.99. So it's kind of like sucking you in, yeah. and then all of a sudden, when you want more, they That's you need free. to pay more. Okay. Yes, so yeah. light. Okay. So again, because we you know we don't require the students to pay for these themselves, yeah. so we try to integrate the, the light version so that you know we can use them to our best ability. If some students go home and do you know add on and that's their own personal and choice. if we want like the shoe app the shoe designer app um, I put that in my budget and so the school has budgeted so many copies of that app and the school they, they I don't know how they do it but they get all the apps that each student will need so at the beginning of the at the end of the school year I almost have to turn in my apps that I need for the next school year so if they're if they're not free mm -hmm. um, so then then I put it in my budget it gets approved and then they buy them because when you buy them in bulk with an educator they do get discounts um, and then that's how, so the kids don't have to buy the five ninety or four ninety nine shoe designer. It's on there already. It's on there already for them. Okay. Um, all right, so next we do um, use in child development and also I would use last week in interior design. It's called Pen Ultimate. And it's a good way to take notes um, on the iPad virtually. Um, what we did in child development in our t Teaching Young Children course is we take pictures of the high schoolers teaching and then we can write notes like, you know, your body language or, you, you know, maybe you should smile or, you know, a lot of little um, formative feedback to give to the students. We can email it right to them or email it to ourselves and print it up. Um, it's a good way to kind of log that. Um, we also have the students, the high school students, take pictures of their case study children and then they can take notes as well as they're doing like a cutting sample or um, just like, like writing down what they're saying during that time so they can refer back to it later for a parent conference um, with that child. Um, interior design, I just for the first time used this last week. Um, they're redesigning their bedrooms and so we taught, I taught them about floor plans and they're going to be utilizing the principles and elements of design and I had them go to their house, take a picture of their bedroom and then take notes as to what they would change, what they would modify. If they had an endless budget, what would they do with their bedroom? If it's the paint color, do they love a painting? Or they, you know, circle it and keep that. So, you know, spending 15 minutes to kind of brainstorm, you know, it's a part of their planning and research um, assessment before they get started. So, we tried it out and they seem to like that. How long are your classes? How many minutes? 15 50. minutes. 50. Most, most days. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> we have funky schedules. Um, so child development, we're going to move forward with that. Um, Hello Baby, this is one we use in the prenatal development unit. Um, some of us may have used this before, it seems like. Um, it's nice because it shows week by week development and it's, you know, it's nice. I will plug it into the computer and show on the screen. It's nice to, you know, talk about it but actually show them. It will move the baby around and gives you some facts about each week. So we use that one as well as um, for fertility and pregnancy. Um, we like this one because it's very relevant news. That it's very current. Um, we were looking at today, and actually from last week, they have new articles. And what it does is you click on the news, it'll give you like a little blurb, and then you will click on it, and it'll take you to an article. So it's pretty interesting. There's also really nice videos by month by month, and there's a lot of different types. You can see real ultrasounds, and it's just a nice way to integrate it into the curriculum. Sometimes it can be kind of dry and informative, and to show them, you know, what's really going on. We do not. No. We really don't. You don't. No. But again, if there are things like calendars and calculators, if you had doctor's appointments, if you were a mother, um, <laughs> but that's not, just not our population. Yeah, um, I taught at schools that have. Yeah, I've had lots. You know, seven or eight students in my class, but not at this school. Not, not really. No. Not that it hasn't happened, but most of the time the students are encouraged um, not to stay at our school. They will send them to a different. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's what know. it is. <laughs> it is what it is. Right, right. But yes, if you're pregnant, I mean, there are ways to, like, you know, keep your sure. everything together on the well, calendar. It makes so much sense to a, a young high schooler who is pregnant. Or Absolutely. Who Absolutely. Yeah. And so we don't normally, like, you know, go that route, but just, just uh, you know, different news articles that are relevant to the curriculum. Right. Yeah. Um, and again, these, we touch on these to enhance the curriculum. And then um, we're going to do a little um, interactive. Um, portion right now. So what I'm going to do is explain to you. We have a few apps. Build it up. You might have heard of it's where, So there's a visual of it on the left. Um, Barn Light. It's also it looks as Peekaboo on the app, and then a Puzzle Me app and a coloring app. So you'll notice on the left hand side are the apps. 
in the right hand side, you'll notice in your middle, that's probably wondering why you have toys. Uh, <laughs> and envelopes. <laughs> yeah. There is a stacking toy. Okay, it looks like this. Um, a peekaboo, well, we don't have that, but you can pretend. Um, a puzzle right here. It's a little tricky, okay. but you can do it. And then coloring, we have a coloring book pages. We have crayons, and then we have a blank piece of paper. So what we'd like you to do um, with your group is to consider the following. Um, we're going to give you about two minutes to look at the app and then two or three minutes to practice um, either coloring or doing the puzzle. We want you guys to consider the following. How do you compare and contrast the app versus the actual toy or the coloring page? Um, what are these teaching children? Um, how can the children manipulate the objects okay, or the app? And how are their senses being stimulated? Can they touch them? Can they feel them? Can they smell them? Okay, think about problem solving, creativity. How, does, how is that promoted with the app and the toy? So we're going to give you guys a few minutes. Um, we'll put this back on the screen. You'll know there's a little, um, like, looks like a note card that will explain the, the name of the app. And also, you will notice you have either a toy or crayons in the middle of your table. And we'll walk around. Well, the and envelopes help you. are for something else. Yeah, yeah. So that's for another interactive thing. So we'll leave these questions up to discuss with your group members. Yeah, well, the app first.
touch the color, they touch the part of the picture that they wanted that color. So they mix colors? No. No. How about fine motor skills? Okay. And what about with the coloring book? Elmo and Big Bird, when did they? We didn't go there. Okay. I'm from really old school. I'm with you. Taught a long time ago that yeah. you didn't have a creativity. No. Or the worst boy in the world is what my child was taught in college. Why, why did she say that? Well, basically, I think when we were talking about it, it was the idea that people expect children too young to stay in the line and have all of those kind of things, and there is no creativity to it. It's not, you know, it's, it's the picture they know what the picture is. Well, I if think you, especially when you have a familiar person. What well, color is Elmo? Red. 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 You know, if a kid's at school and colors Elmo green, someone might say, well, you're doing it wrong. Yeah. Right? And really in creativity, there's no wrong. Right? I was going to get a blue piece of paper. He tells my kids to color in the line. <laughs> Why have to color in the line? <laughs> what about the paper? The plain piece of paper. You can do whatever you want. You can do whatever you want. Right. What about their senses um, with our stacking toy? Okay, so we have an app that's like a stacking, you drag the pieces in the app and then it makes the stacking toy, or we have the old you know, stacking rings. Okay, so with the stacking rings, what about their senses? Okay, so what are their senses? Well, what about the sound that mm -hmm. they make? Because mm -hmm. there's a different sound from the plastic in here and it's sliding down and all that, whereas an amp, even if it has a sound, is one sound and it's the same for every time. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if it falls off, it clutters and confuses you and you watch how it moves. Mm -hmm. And you learn something from that. Right. And with crayons, they smell and they get feel wet. Yeah. right way to stack it. Exactly. Yeah, that so it it won't allow you to try right. it. it automatically so you can't that. try something different. Like you have different. to do it yeah. the right way. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So sad. So again, it's there's maybe awesome. not, you know, and the whole that's the whole creativity and problem solving. Turning the puzzle piece a hundred different ways to try it again. Trying the same puzzle piece five pieces later when it may be the place pace it fits. Why can't the small one go on the bottom? You know, like try that first. Let the child discover what could be right or wrong. So again, you know, which is the best way to learn? Okay, again, the best way is to really give them the actual object. You know, that's that's the best way. And so that's what we want to it's what we try to teach our students. The best way is this. Is this okay? Yeah, it's okay. But it can't be the only way. The technology can't be the only way. No, the, the app, and again, sometimes the actual toy can't be the only way. You know, I mean, we took a driving trip this, you know, over the summer with my kids, and you know, I couldn't have brought a stacking toy in the car. So, you know, I, did they play with the app in the car for a couple minutes? Yeah, but again, it can't. So we have to teach our students these things, so because they, so that they can recognize that technology isn't always the best way to learn, and not all of us learn really well that way either. And again, you're missing the smell of the crayons and the, you know, Christina, the feeling of them. Is Mr. Rogers and Sesame Street still big? No, not really. No. Mm -mm. I mean, that was really, like yeah. the yeah. thing. And yeah. These kids were there. Yeah. No, not really. Definitely not Mr. Rogers. Mr. Rogers has changed to being a neighborhood. Yeah. Like oh. it's kind of it's more of a cartoon. Okay. Is there any questions or other, you know, comments on this kind of idea? I think you're surprised too of how smart your kids are and how they can get this a lot faster than you can. So with apps, it's all about thinking one step ahead of them or sometimes asking them for their own advice. Um, they're out there looking for their apps. They're the ones who use these the most um, and know how to figure out things really fast. I mean, how many of you couldn't even figure some of the stuff out we're doing today? Take some time, right? So I'm not turning the thing on. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the students are great 
great resources as well. Um, they are good to ask them, what did you like? What did you not like? What would you change? They're the ones who help build your lessons because they're the ones that are continually using it. And they're the ones who are, it's easy for them. It comes naturally. Whereas for us, it's more, a little bit work figuring out how we can integrate it into our curriculum. And you're a millennial. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard. I have kids who know more about technology and I think I'm pretty tech savvy, but they're still <laughs> a step ahead. All right, so we're going to move on to foods um, in our classes. So um, a lot of my families actually are always asking me for recipes, and at open house, nine times out of ten, they will say, how do you organize your recipes? And so I wanted to include this for professionals and personal life use, as well as um, something our students can use for organizing all of that. Okay, so paprika is the best one I've found as far as recipe collection goes. Um, because of its organization and its technology tools within the app. Uh, the things that I like best about it is you can automatically save from your browser. If any of you are Pinterest users, um, you can automatically at the top of your browser put in a pin it. You know what I'm talking about, Pinterest users? So when you're online and you're searching and I'm on house and I see something I like, I can pin it to Pinterest. This is the exact same thing with Paprika. Uh, you can have it's a save recipe um, icon that you can automatically put on your browser whether you use Chrome or whatever browser you choose um, it's really nice so if I see something on Food Network's website I can you know pin it or save the recipe to paprika and that is on my paprika on my computer it's on my paprika on my iPhone it's on my iPad it connects all those devices so if I am at home or I'm at school it's easily accessible if I'm looking for that recipe. Um, it also helps you with meal planning and does grocery lists. So once your recipes are all on there, you can select the recipes you want for your month and it'll generate a, a grocery list based upon your recipes that you choose. So if you're that organized, <laughs> yes. I have a question just for this. Mm -hmm. If you buy the app, yes. can you use that same app yes. on everything yes. that you so um, yeah. if I, sh I should say that's like if you're on iTunes, so if you're a Mac user, once you buy it on your iTunes account for every I think thing you're that limited you're to five devices. Device. Five, yeah, five devices. Okay. Yeah. But most people, so that's you good. That's buy good. one for five iPads because they would know. So yeah. it could be used on a, a, a Mac, right. an iPad, right. and an iPhone. Right, for you personally. So like I said, this is a personal one. This is not something I use with my students. If I wanted to share recipes with my students, I either put it on our website or have a Pinterest board that they can follow for those recipes. Yes? So your school has like an ID for like schooling this Yes, like yes. I do not require my students to purchase this app because I think it's $5. That was when it was when I bought it. I, we did the current price in your packet. Um, but that's kind of, it's kind of a lot to ask a student to buy if it's not in our budget. So if it's an app that we're, that we're requiring them to use in class, the school purchases it for them. They do not have to buy any app on their own. So is it download? Do you collect their iPads? At the, the school does. There's the, a, and then, the school does. And then, the school and does. then download. And then yeah. if they're in the class, then the apps are downloaded. Correct. When they so it's similar to up. distributing textbooks. They distribute their iPad knowing their class list. Here you go. So you do get the iPads back? Mm -hmm. At the end of the year. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if they break it, they buy it. If they break it, they yes. have an insurance policy. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's like they pay 50 for it bucks. The, school pays for it? the students, the students do. pay for their insurance policy. So, all right. So, um, moving on, another uh, one of my learning targets in uh, Gourmet Foods, we talk about the food supply and controversial issues surrounding it. And so we found a few different apps, depending upon what the target is, they're constantly coming out with these apps because consumers are getting more and more concerned about what's in their food, where does it come from. So I use this as part of the unit that we discuss the app. And you know, what, what are the benefits of having this app, pro or con? So we'll talk about genetically modified foods. Um, and there's an app called Bicot. Okay, you can get it on your phone, you can get it on your iPad. You can scan an item and it will tell you if there's genetically modified ingredients in it and it'll give you the whole family tree of history. So if it's a craft company, you'll see craft at the top, you'll see all their other brands that they actually own 
and down at the bottom. So you can see the family tree um, and discuss that as well. Um, it gives you sometimes uh, like a nutrition fact. It depends upon what the product is too. Um, and it just says if there's any controversial issues surrounding that, which I think is a great discussion tool, whether you're pro-GMO or not. Um, and I never try to reveal my side on the, my personal opinion of that. I try to use it as a discussion tool. So um, the kids create infographics, which uh, there's websites that can help you do that if you're interested in doing, um, to showcase the, um, the food supply controversies. Okay, um, and some of these apps just help them do that project. Um, another one is like with the seafood watch. But right. Now you're eliminating having to make a copy and give it to the kids. Correct. Because right. it's all right there. I think I just talked to a teacher, um, and they have, they left them like they 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 figure out how much paper they had to buy, and I think I just heard that um, like this past like already we've eliminated like a million pieces of paper right. um, mm -hmm. from having to get copied because yeah. right. Before, I had to photocopy the label, get them the, you know, now they can just get it on their device. Right. right. Yeah. That's interesting. Um, and the Seafood Watch um, for Monterey Bay, I know a lot of you have probably been to the website to see um, or have the app on your phone um, to see if you're going to choose a menu item, if it is one of the recommended fish selections or seafood or not. Um, so that we talk about that as well and why are these products available? Why do they have these apps? Because people are starting to get concerned about the food supply um, and how are um, we designing restaurant menus based around this, etc. So you can choose your topic in any food controversy and there's probably an app for it to have a little discussion on um, that consumer product. Um, another one is Fujicate. So I actually am going to show you guys. I went down. Sorry if you like bugles. I'm so sorry. Um, I went down to the food pantry here and made some purchases so that I could show you um, how fast this information becomes available. Um, so Fujicate is an app that you can get. Um, you hit scan. Okay, it looks like a scan code like you're at the grocery store. And when you. So then we scan it. It recognizes it, boom, it's there, okay? So it already rec recognizes it's bugles, and it looks exactly like this, like this cranberry almond crunch. It gives it a rating, A, B, C to the F, okay? Uh, this says bugles is a D plus, okay? <laughs> um, it says package alert leads to overconsumption. Well, if I wanna read about that, um, it's going to tell me, it also gives me a food label, okay, so there's no searching online for this anymore when you guys are developing your plans, which is a great app. Um, it tells me my ingredients, and I can show all because all the ingredients don't fit into one little box. Um, and then it says, um, why does it lead to overconsumption? Well, it's the BHT that's in it, the food preservative, that, that's kind of a little controversial right now that they're adding as a preservative. It is actually addictive, and they've been able to study that. Um, so it's a great conversation tool. You know, they're adding an addictive basically drug into here. Um, well, why are you more? more, more I don't know. <laughs> um, so there's a little warning on here that you're not going to see that on these labels. That's not a requirement. All you see is that it contains BHT, and uh, most <laughs> students, you know, aren't aware of what that is. Um, and then it says like it, it has all these additional like questions. So down at the bottom, why do chips and puff rate so low? And it talks about you know it's a low nutrient density. Any chip or puff, you know, doesn't grow on a tree. I read that from Chop Shop this week. It's food day. It's I like that dumb. quote. <laughs> um, so that's it. It's so fast. And then, so I tried to um, get another selection. We have a day at school where we say bring a snack to class day, and every single time they bring a snack with a barcode. Um, nobody brings an apple, which is my first discussion with them. Sure. Um, but an orange or a pear. Yeah, it always has a barcode, so it's cool at their um, tables. They can scan it. You get very clear information. The um, app comes right up. So my trail mix got a C. It gives me my um, food label. It gives me my list of ingredients. It tells me um, some controversies surrounding the artificial coloring. And then down at the bottom, it even says. Um, like why are some raisins different colors? <laughs> like there's always additional information that might spark some more interest in students. Um, so I think it's a neat, great app with a ton of different information. You can go a, a lot of different ways with it. Um, so that's Fuju Kate, free app. Um, that's a simple question. Yes. Do you allow your students to eat while they're 
anywhere close to these devices? Yes. Yeah, you do. Yep, we, um, we bring them right into the foods lab. Um, just last week, um, we were doing garnishing um, and the students wanted to see how to, I had a student make an apple bird out of a radish. So um, they brought their iPad back to the lab and they watched them do an apple bird and they had it in front of them with the video while they were cutting. Okay. So yes, we do. Um, they, they make some things that like some stands. easel kind of stands that you could probably purchase if you were worried about spilling, but we do. They're pretty durable. Sure. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, Harvest is another one. Um, this is great for um, how do you store foods and um, select the best foods. So my students for a final exam are going to create a blog this semester um, on meal planning. So they will use the site Harvest to not only give a shopping list, but tell how to know like when is an avocado uh, the best avocado to select, what should you be looking for, um, if they're, they have guacamole on their meal plan for that day. So they'll add those consumer tips as well. So Harvest is a good app for those um, consumer tips. It'll also tell you like seasonal um, things. So we in the food supply unit, we talk about um, purchasing things seasonally. Um, so this, this helps with that as well. That one? Um, we do. It's a supportive device, but I think um, a lot of the textbook companies are realizing that they need to keep up, and they're they're going to be, I suspect, um, coming out with things to apps, and their textbooks are digitally now, um, so we would purchase them that way. Um, our school, we have freshman backpacks, is what they call it. Um, they're like they're carried like on eight pounds. books <laughs> and that was literally one of the reasons our students don't go to their lockers they go class to class to class all day um, so that was actually one of the reasons why we went to the iPads because they can get the books digitally Okay. so yes so and I, I would assume some apps will come out from textbook companies beyond <laughs> beyond the textbook I would think sure. yeah um, anyway um, because you'll see a lot of these apps we're using are commercial apps. Mm -hmm. And I think textbook companies would say, you know, we'll be after that. Market. Market, yeah. Um, okay, so Instagram, this is huge. Um, I think bigger than Facebook today, really, with a lot of our students, um, at the high school level anyway. Um, so students are uh, using Instagram to post pictures. So instead of words, it's, it's pictures. Um, they can put little comments down on the bottom. Uh, but I require this for my students in Gourmet Foods. They have to photograph and plate their food items, and they have to post it to Instagram to turn it into me with the hashtag of um, my created course-specific hashtag. So I made SHS Gourmet. Um, I do that because I don't want to follow my students. I keep my personal life separate from my professional life, and it's a great way to teach them that. So I do not follow my students' Instagram. I follow their hashtag. So it's an easy way for me to search for them, what they've posted, but I cannot see anything that they've posted personally. Um, I just no, don't want to cross <laughs> that line um, of having to see something I don't want to. Okay, so I really recommend that. It's also a great marketing tool because you can see Haley made her apple pie a couple weeks ago. She had 21 likes when I took the screenshot. <laughs> so 21 of her friends saw that she made an apple pie in Gourmet Foods today. Pretty cool, and yeah. she, yeah, Absolutely. right. And my students have right. said that they don't do they don't do Facebook anymore. They yeah. very rarely use Facebook. They're on Twitter and Instagram. Right. So Instagram's, I think, a great great marketing tool as well. Um, and oh, I have a question. oh, sorry. How do you know what? Because I know on Instagram some people's pages are private. So how do you know which student has posted something else? Uh, they give me. I cut off her um, thing off the screenshot on purpose but they give me their username, so I know their username. Um, and that is at the top of the picture, but I wanted her to remain anonymous just for privacy reasons. Right. Yeah, so if she clicks on, if she types in SHS Gourmet or clicks on this, all of the students. I see all my students with their username. So she has their username. And I know their username. Most of the time you can figure out who's who, and then I'll ask if I don't know. And the parents like to see what they're doing too. 
Yes. So I know like a lot of parents will follow, you know, the certain hashtags yeah. and things like we that. We encourage that at open house to follow the hashtag so they can see what the whole class is doing. So um, and then Twitter is a tool that I use personally uh, with my class. I guess I should say I use it only professionally. I do not use Twitter personally. I don't find it like that valuable for my personal life. Um, but it's extremely, I would say, one of the best things that I've done for me professionally. Um, it's great for me to get the message out to my parents, to my students, um, about what we're doing in class. So I would tweet a photograph of their salsa and guacamole that we made for, fresh from our school garden. And it's pretty cool to showcase that to the public and show them what we're doing in class. Um, like I said, hashtag, create a hashtag for your class. So if your kids don't feel comfortable following you, they don't want to see, I'm following Mrs. Lorman on their list of people they're following, they can still follow the hashtag without following you as a teacher so they don't have to get made fun of from their friends. Or when you create um, your username, create it with your class title so they could follow Gourmet Foods instead of me. I had already developed this before I thought of that. I have my, like so. I have one for my design students mm -hmm. and mine is SHS Design. So right. um, that's like my at, so it's at SHS Design. So then again, I don't, again, like Sarah, I don't usually use, I don't usually use Twitter personally, but I do use it for my classes. Right. Um, not only is this a great way to showcase what we're doing in our classes, but also if I find a new article on something that I'm reading in nutrition, I will tweet it and I will put a link of that um, article of the URL. But one app that you'll want to download if you do start to use Twitter is Short URL app. There's a, a few different apps. I use Short URL. It's a free one. Um, so you have the URL, you put it into Short URL, and then it makes like a 10 character um, link for you so it's not like a hundred letter link because Twitter only allows you to um, use 140 characters in your tweets so you have to be really concise with how you speak to your students and every single message you send and I find myself um, very impatient now actually when I'm researching things because I'm like craving tweets. I don't, I don't want a lot of information unless I choose to read extra information. I like to read a little bit and then if there's a link there and I'm interested, I want to read more. And I find my students are kind of having that mentality now. Um, the infographics are huge. You know, they have a lot of information with a little bit of words. Um, and I'm finding that they, they think email is dinosaur <laughs> and they want short, brief information that if they want to look into more information, they can. So I think that's going to be a wave of the future as well to try to stay up with. And then who do I follow professionally? These are some of my favorites. Um, so you could look at on as well. Obviously, AAFCS headquarters. Uh, they are great at um, tweeting information and getting it out to us. Um, there's job postings all over the country for them. Um, if you're looking for a change in your job or you're just interested in that, they are very good about that. Um, Susan Lynn, if you know her, um, Susan Lynn from Harvard um, is with the, what's the C? I don't remember what campaign the acronym is. Campaign for a Commercial Free Childhood. Yeah, Campaign for a Commercial Free Childhood. She would have liked our child she's development awesome. activity today. She's amazing. Um, she's written, what books? Um, Gosh, I'm, my brain is not so working. A lot of, she talks a lot about um, like the commercialization of childhood and toys. And no screen time. Um, she's, she's really great um, with, with thinking about child development in that way. Um, who, what, where talks about current trends. Edutopia is huge for education and current things with um, education. Again, strategies for differentiated in instruction. If I see that tweet today and I'm like, uh, I've heard too much about differentiated in instruction, I don't care, I, I move on. But if I'm really interested in learning about instru differentiated instruction, I click the link and then I read more, right? Um, that's great. Michael Pollan is amazing. Um, in Defense of Food is a book that he wrote. Um, food Rules. Food Rules, great, great, fantastic resources. Uh, food Network, again, obviously that's an easy one. And then Illinois AFCS, um, this is something I personally hope um, to keep going with. Um, I'm the webmaster on the board, so this is another way I feel like we could stay connected a little bit better. So I put together a 
uh, Twitter account as well for you guys to follow so that we can get information and resources out very easily if you are a Twitter user. Um, I think it would be nice to share all of the current stuff with you as well. So, yes. So are you going to share it? Can somebody send it? Like yeah, it, it'll be up on our it'll be on You know our what I do, thing. actually, too, is I, like, if you um, are interested in seeing who I follow, you can go on mine and you can see, like, who I follow, and that's how I started using Twitter. So I looked at Michael Pollan because I love him and his books. So I looked at who he followed, and I started following some of the people who he followed because they've got a lot of good resources. Um, AAFCS, I looked at who, what other states have Twitter accounts. Pennsylvania has one, Indiana has one, so I follow them. You know, so you look at who other people are following and that helps well as well. Uh, when you're at conferences, it's good to talk to people. Do you have a Pinterest account? Do you have a Twitter account? You know, to share information and really um, stay connected outside of that. On the handout so. that you guys do have, like we said, the FCS website, www.fcsstevenson.com. I will post the PowerPoint there um, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Let us get home and then <laughs> we'll post it. Sound good? We were making changes today, so we didn't want to post it before today. <laughs> All right. Okay, one more um, idea is Doodle Buddy. Um, I love Pictionary. So Doodle Buddy is a free app that you can play Pictionary in your classroom um, very easily. So in front of you, you have a uh, envelope with terms, culinary terms. So what you do is you go to Doodle Buddy and you'll go with a partner. One of you will draw, you will see what the term is and the definition if you need it. Um, obviously, with our students, if we were using this uh, as an assessment tool, I would have the term and not the definition. Mm -hmm. If I was using this as a learning tool, so they've never been exposed to these terms, I would use cards like this. So, um, you, one draws, one guesses. We'll give you, what do you think, a two minute, minutes? Two either. minutes to play. Okay, so. so this is just for drawing, so I can draw. You just draw. draw. You draw. Like pictionary. Cool
Okay. So now you get to graciously listen to me as I've been waiting so long to talk to you guys. It's my turn. Um, okay. So more culinary apps. I focus, I teach all, no, all culinary classes, so that's kind of my go-to now. Um, so Escoffier is actually a great app to use, and the reason being is very updated and really great resource for your students. Um, everything is there for you. This is a free app, which is nice. Um, they have converters, so it depends if you want them to use a converter or know the information themselves, like three teaspoons or a tablespoon and so forth, but that could be extra practice for them. It has a glossary, which has different types of foods. It also has ingredients and descriptions. Um, it gives you overview. It gives you how to use that ingredient, when you should use the ingredients. Um, and then it also talks about equipment and how do you store it, how do you wash it, how do you use it. Um, so that's another resource that you could do instead of doing something that's teacher-led where you're basically lecturing to them, telling them how it's used. Maybe you could have them use this app and actually research the information and then assess them by having them tell you what they found, how you use the equipment and the ingredients and so forth. So it's something that could be a more student-centered activity. So they have two different versions. They have the Cook's Companion that has the glossary and the ingredient description and the equipment. And then they also have a culinary library, which this is where they have their recipes. And what I love about their recipes is they have picture step-by-step -step tutorials. Um, so up here is showing you example. So if they're toasting pine nuts, they're showing you a picture of it. Then they're showing how they're making it into a paste to make a pesto. Um, and they're very visual and very vibrant colors and it's, you know, appealing for the kids to look at. You can also then use this, we've done this in some of our classes, is having the students then make their own recipe that has a step-by-step -step picture and guidelines for it. Um, so it's a good tool to have them look at and then you can incorporate this into your lesson as well. Um, but it's very visual and it's an exciting app and it's free. And they could take the iPad then into the lab with them to follow those step-by-step -step directions, too. Exactly. Um, so another app that is a general app, which is called Pick Stitch. Um, a lot of students use this. What it is, it's a collage. So you can take numerous pictures, and you can put them into a collage. So you can use this. I use it in my own classroom for knife skills. So I had the students show me this is how this would be evidence, because you can't get around to 24 students to check if they know all their knife skills. So you can take a picture of them, how do they hold the knife, how do you make a julienne cut, how do you pair something, um, how do you chop, how do you mince, and what they can do is there's different options, you can have like five pictures, four pictures, and what they can do is all you do is drag the picture into the selected area. So you can use this um, as your evidence to know and understand if your student met that target. Um, but this is one of those general ed apps that can be used in food, it can be used in child development, it can be used in fashion, maybe they're going to do something with clothing and construction, and they can do a step by step. Mm -hmm. And then they would like tweet that. So then what they can do is they can like tweet it, they can email it, they can upload it somehow so that you get the evidence in your hands. Instagram. Yeah, Instagram it. Um, a lot of students are using this now, they use this with Instagram. So they do pick stitch, they create something really cool, and then they upload it. So up here um, in our gourmet foods class, their, one of their previous finals was to create a one last bite. So up here they show the different pictures of their one last bite. And with 24 students and five classes of that, you know, it Whoa. can be hard to <laughs> get all of it. Yeah, let's get all that. So that's your evidence. You have that tangible in your hands for that's you. That's great. Nice. I want to go back to <laughs> um, another app for general education is graphic organizers. So sticky board is literally sticky notes, virtual sticky notes. Um, I've used this in children's nutrition, so they take a concept, they can create a graphic organizer, um, then that can be emailed to you and it's right there for you. Um, the students like it, they can type on it, they can add arrows, they can draw pictures. But it's like a virtual sticky board where it has sticky notes. There's a lot of different general education apps um, that are like graphic organizers. Um, there's like whiteboards. 
sorry. I can't stand behind that. It bothers me. <laughs> um, but different stuff out there for you. Uh, I just like Sticky Board. It was very user friendly and easy for the students to grasp and use right away. Um, Socrative. So this is actually a website that has made their own app. I use this in my classroom to take quizzes. Um, what you do is the students can take the quiz via their iPhone, via Chromebook, um, tablets, desktop computers, their laptops, and it is all um, done online. You create the quizzes yourself. They can be um, true-false, it can be multiple choice, it can be short answer, and it can be a mixture. And what I love about it is the students will get onto the website, it asks you for a room number, so you create a room number, the students then get into your room, they take the quiz at a, their own student pace, and then once it's completed, it emails you a report, a spreadsheet of all the students um, and their answers. And what I like about it is then I use it to determine for each question how many students missed it, um, do I need to refocus on this, do I need to change my lesson. Um, it's very user friendly and it's quick and easy because um, it's right there for you. You don't have then the million stacks of quizzes and whatever you're giving your students. Um, you can also use it in the sense you can have do, students do like polls or they can answer an open-ended question and then what you can do is post their answers without their names on the screen and you can talk about each of their individual answers um, for your shy students who have those great answers and they don't like to share them all the time. This is a way that every student's voice gets heard in the classroom. Um, another app. So we've used um, Puppet Pals, which is actually a children's app where it's a virtual puppet show. Um, and you can create backgrounds and you can use cool and fun characters like we have Obama on here um, and Hillary Clinton will be on there. Um, but what they can do is we've used it in multiple classes. Um, we've used it in foods when we talk about um, talking about meals and meal planning and having a client and discussing, you know, were they eating the correct food and whatnot. And we also use it in the sense with our teaching young children um, when you're teaching about discipline and how to discipline a children and coming up with some of those guidance tools of what you should do. So here we have an example, a student example of how they've used discipline and how they come up with strategies to use it correctly in the classroom. <laughs> so you can like move them. Can you tell me what happened? Barack, call me mean names. She's and big because she's a teacher. <laughs> Did you like it when Barack hit you? No, it hurt. Then why don't you tell Barack? It hurt me when you hit me. I didn't like it. What? Barack, was that helpful or hurtful? So they can really have fun with it. Um, in our foods classes, they do like, I've had kids do like Winnie the Pooh, and he's like, oh, I'm eating way too much honey. What are your suggestions of things that I could do? So it's kind of a fun way, but the students can still master the target. Um, and then you can show them in class if you want to. Um, and it's something that's very user friendly. Um, there is a, I'm pretty sure it's free. It, the, it's light. You can get the light version, but then if you want more cool backgrounds and more characters, um, you have to pay $2.99. You can also um, take pictures of yourself, and I have kids who like cut out themselves and then place themselves in the app as well. So that's just a general ed app that we've taken um, and put it into numerous classes. Okay. All right. Um, Another general one is TED Talks. Um, basically, TED Talks is videos of people giving speeches. Um, and they're encouraged to do it in 18 minutes. So again, it's a great way to get information to your students if you want to search by topic. Um, I personally love Jamie Oliver, I'm a big fan of the Food Revolution. Um, so um, you know, he's done some speeches, lots of great information. Um, and it's you can search by topic, by trend, by a tag, by a particular speaker. Um, and then um, one that um, we have found is Sir Ken Robinson. Robinson. Um, and so he talks a lot about learning and teaching. So this can not only be for yourself um, to 
improve yourself professionally or personally, but also to bring information to your students. Um, we use Calendgu. Um, it basically, what it does is it uses your Google Calendar to collaborate with your colleagues. Um, so we use this. Um, we have a mobile computer lab cart or computer iPad. La, 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 computer cart and so we schedule it we're in all different classrooms all different periods of the day so we schedule it and we reserve it and that way if I'm at home and I need to see if Michelle is using it tomorrow and if so what period what room is she going to be in so I can lug it to my classroom for the period that I need it so it helps with our planning our school calendar is also all now on Google so it helps that brings the school calendar into it for crazy schedules that we might have um, it can also, you can use it for a class calendar and have your student, you can send the link, that calendar to your students. Um, there's also ones that are um, similar like Pocket Informant, Calendar, and Cloud Calendar. Um, and then, like I told you guys, on your handout, there is a QR code. Um, the, the app that we used was is called Scan. There's also um, Enig Enigma, and you're seeing, we're seeing these everywhere now. Um, you can use this actually to direct your students to a particular web page if you don't want them to have to type in the address. Um, so we um, did this for Food Day. Food Day was on Thursday. If you guys don't know, foodday.org is an organization that promotes healthy eating and eating real, so eating unprocessed foods. Um, and so we really encourage this with our students. And so we did a whole Food Day thing. Um, you could follow this QR code and get to a free cookbook. Um, we did also the apple crunch, so New York City did this, and we kind of joined in, and we got apples, and our students all in apple together, like all the and during each class period, um, kind of just again we and we used this to per, we we put it out what we were doing. We had a chef demonstration in the cafeteria, making stir fry from scratch with fresh vegetables and fresh sauces, um, and promoted it all using. Twitter, using Facebook, um, using these QR codes for the kids to get to the cookbook and information. So you can use this in a lot of different ways um, with your students. And the one on the front of our handout will get you to our website. Um, so our website address is fcsstevenson.com. Um, so I will, like I said, put up the PowerPoint there. We also, when we started doing these, um, having the iPads with the teachers, there is a wiki that our, our entire school participates in. So if you have within your school Spanish teachers looking for an idea or something, you could direct them to this as well. Um, and we just want you guys to share with us now, what are some things that you guys are doing? What are some things, um, apps maybe you have found that you're using in your classrooms um, that we could all maybe benefit from? Because we want you guys to be able to take these ideas back and go implement them on you know, Monday, because I'm sure you're all going to be wow. revising your curriculums like we do every five minutes. We promised you 30. We promised you 30. We gave you 30. So what are you going to share with us? Anything? Anything that you guys are using that's really cool? And no, everybody just wants to go home. You look like my students on like a Monday morning right now if they've had Friday off of school. Um, well, if, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. Um, I'll, I'll kind of be like the voice for our department and just say thank you so much for staying. We know this has been a long day. We, we had a long drive yesterday. We got a long drive home tonight. Um, but again, thank you so much um, for staying. And if you have any questions or any ideas that you want to share with us, please send them on. We'd love to hear them. We'd love to have them from you guys. Yes. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks. That's what we do. That's what we do.